We know that the environmental crises coming at us rapidly are enormous. And we know that they can seem really overwhelming. The, the energy crisis, the peak oil, the climate change, what's happening in the world's oceans, what's happening to the world's future food supply. So then we're facing a choice. Are we going to say this is all hopeless and, and we there's something wrong with civilization, we should stop and go back? Or are we going to say that's a crisis, but what makes us think we can't handle this? Our ancestors successfully tackled slavery. They successfully overthrew kings and tyrants. Are we going to say to them that we who have more information, more support than any other generation is going to wimp out on this challenge? Of course we can do this. To believe in ourselves, to believe in our ability of civilization to change, adapt, innovate, and build an entire economy operating in harmony with nature. We can do this. This is Peak Moment. We are living at a peak of human innovation, information, wealth, and health. But we're also at a peak of population and consumption, with rising temperatures and declining resources fueled by cheap oil and gas. Peak Moment Television, bringing you examples of positive responses to energy decline and climate change through local community action. Hi, welcome to Peak Moment. I'm Jenea Donaldson. When we taped a conversation in 2006 with Guy Dauncey, author, activist, futurist, it was about global warming and peak oil. And the energy and the enthusiasm that Guy had was remarkable to me. So on his poster, How to End Global Warming, he starts with, get excited about an energy revolution. And he gives all kinds of practical suggestions. And he ends with, kiss the carbon years goodbye. Our world will be whole and healed tomorrow if we pay attention today. That kind of guy, thank you for joining me this time. Pleasure. Well, that kind of flaming enthusiasm, if you will, doesn't seem to be au courant in But circles. it's the only approach that makes sense. Some people say, are you feeling pessimistic or optimistic about this massive litany of environmental issues? And there are some serious and ones. And I say that that's not the issue. Are you feeling pessimistic or optimistic? The issue is, are you feeling defeated or determined? If you're in a team, mm -hmm. if you want to be on the sidelines and watch the team play, go ahead and be on the sidelines. But you've got no entitlement to an opinion, frankly. Because that's how the game goes. And because how, you're only on the no, sidelines. You, you've got no control over it. Right. Once you're in the game, Soccer players and football players aren't saying, do I feel pessimistic or optimistic? They're saying, are we going to make this happen or are we defeated? Mm -hmm. And I'm really concerned. You know, I know really well how bad the environmental issues in the world are. I have been immersed in climate change and peak oil issues for 10, 15 years. And the unpreparedness for peak oil, even the International Energy Agency folks are saying it's coming by 2020. The petroleum geologists are saying, expect it very soon. And within climate change, we're right now heading towards you know, a, a global temperature increase of 3.5 degrees or so you know, by mid-century onwards. And all of the upheavals we're having today are caused by you know, less than one degree. This is Celsius. Now, in upheavals? Fact, up, what do you mean upheavals? For instance, the flooding in Pakistan and the mm -hmm. forest fires in Russia from mm -hmm. this summer of 2010 seem to have a common pattern that the jet stream stop moving. It got frozen in place. And no one knows quite now why it got frozen in place. So it locked real heat over Russia. It locked real moisture over Pakistan. The phenomenal fifth of Pakistan underwater, not just the floods, but their entire agriculture wiped out. Their chickens, their tractors, their grains, their, mm -hmm. their soil, their everything. And it's see, there's a possibility, I can't put scientific back into this, that the melting of the ice in the Arctic is, is messing with the jet stream. And we know that the Arctic ice is melting dramatically. So yes. Yes. So I know that the, the news is bad, and that unless we act urgently on all this, we're not going to get progress. But when you're dealing with a huge struggle, you never get success on it by just going around saying it's going to be terrible, it's going to be terrible, it's mm -hmm. going to be terrible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In World War II, in 1940, when Hitler occupied most of Europe, and the Britain had been defeated at Dunkirk and just got their troops out, America wasn't in the war, it would have been really easy to say, let's make it a nil-all draw. You can have half of France, Mr. Hitler, and, we, and we'll just call it quits. Yes, There's still peace yes, with Russia. Yes. And Churchill, with his cabinet, said, you know, we have only one outcome, complete unconditional surrender. We cannot let democracy and freedom be trampled by this monster tyrant, Hitler. 
And Churchill said that if he'd recommended anything else apart from unconditional you know, victory, he'd have been thrown out of the cabinet room. And the whole of Britain felt that way. Wow. Determined. So they didn't yes. think, are we optimistic or pessimistic? And, mm -hmm. and they, had, they didn't know on the ground how they were going to do this. Okay. They, on the rational leave, and they didn't have the airplanes, they, they didn't have the troops, they'd been driven out of Europe, you know. Which would be they, a natural time to say, let's give up. Absolutely. Let's, let, okay. Yes. And they'd just come out of World War I yeah. with so many people. That's why there was a delay in stopping Hitler, because people were so exhausted by the defeat and suffering and death of World War I. So I know the dangers. I know the dangers of sea level rise, of extreme drought, extreme flood, of, of huge food disruptions, of coming hunger, of species disruptions. But th the motivating force for everything I'm doing is the complete belief that humans have the ability to tackle these issues. So the reason, you know, the, the, the new book I just put together, The Climate Challenge, 101 Solutions to Global Warming, mm -hmm. okay. um, specifically, they're the crises and they're the solutions, specifically draws on our faith in ourselves to tackle crises of this kind. And I know that it's, it's, it's climate change. You can also do a whole program on what's happening in the world's oceans. Mm -hmm. The massive, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, decimation isn't a strong enough word, the destruction of the world, global fisheries. Because we just grab, 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 take, 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 oops, it's empty. Then they don't recover, right? And there's many, whether it's the world topsoil or the gross consumerism, you can, look at, you can make a big list of all these negative things yes, and say, yeah. oh, humans are the problem, or we should never have started agriculture, or we should never have started you know, anything. Civilizations, Civil which, right. And I completely, right. completely disagree with that. I look at the track record of humans going back over 10,000 years, or actually 100,000 years with a Neolithic background. We're part of nature. The trillion brain cells in our heads evolved specifically because we have four and a half billion years of evolution on this planet. And prior to that, 13 and a half billion years, when atoms said, let's form molecules, when molecules said, let's form organisms, the d instinct to organize for a greater level of achievement and ability to flourish is, is completely built into our whole evolutionary story. Yes. Going yes. back to the the Big Bang, the day when God became pregnant is the analogy I use. Don't, don't think about it too much. So just in the last 500 years, we have chosen to eliminate slavery. We're close to you know, eliminating warfare. So, so the challenge we're facing now, we did defeat fascism by huge global effort in the mm -hmm. mid-century. Mid mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So the challenge now is, okay, how do we change our civilization to live in harmony with nature? Guy, that sounds like a big and daunting... Yeah. Job. I mean, it's like the, 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 the reach of us consuming civilized humans, the billions yeah. over the planet, seems like this is more daunting than putting a man on the moon. But put this in context. In when we decided that we were going to end slavery, yeah. three or four Quakers sat in a coffee house in London in 1746, something like that, and said, Quaker is so abhorrent, we need to end slavery. All right. And within 100 years, they basically started to get traction on that. And the only means of communications were printed things in word of mouth. Right. So when I say our, one of our challenges, our goals for this century is to establish our entire civilization so that we are in harmony with nature. Our whole economy is in harmony with nature. Big. A, it's a big challenge, but this time every single citizen in the world has got an iPhone or a cell phone or a computer can communicate with everyone else. Yes, so that's true. So our ability to organize is not 10 times greater, it's a million times mm. greater. Mm. We can get you know, an instant action happening in 100 places in the world at one week's notice by the right organizer. So we have the communication we, networks. We yes. That helps us a great deal. Yes. We also have more scattering. I mean, there's the other side of that is how do you get th and I do think, those actions you know, help make a difference? The, 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 there is a scattering of actions because we're very new to the massive information that comes at us through the internet. Yeah. Yeah. So a lot of people are finding websites that say this climate change thing is nonsense. It's, yes. it's a plot by European socialist countries to destroy democracy. It's a plot to take away my freedom. Yes. It's a, and it's not true. I have studied every single one of the skeptics' arguments. You can actually go to a website, skepticalscience.com, and see them all listed. Not one of those arguments stands up as a valid explanation for the known rise in temperature. And the climate skeptics change argument every single week. They'll mm -hmm. switch to a new argument when one, one is taken down. Yes, all right. The world scientists, world climate scientists are sort of solidly in consensus. 97% of the world's you know, qualified climate scientists are saying this is happening and it's caused by humans. And so let's get on with doing it. 
the internet gives us the ability, though, to get into an internet bubble and only read the stuff from the climate yes, deniers, and yes. only read the stuff from the Tea Party movement and believe that is your reality. That's a, a problem we just will overcome in time because we're new to this massive explosion of information. So the more programs there are like yours, they can say, OK, the message is don't believe what you read or what you hear now. For your, just take it on. Don't take it for itself. Question it. Ask other, you know, yes, look at other yes. sources. Is yes. what he's saying valid? It teaches us to think for ourselves. That's the right. biggest challenge. All of us that have to think for ourselves. Challenge. And so communications like this are important. So the reason I put the book together with 101 solutions is it goes into great detail. So if you want to know what a business can do, there's 10 solutions. If you want to know what a city government can do, what do we do about transport? How do we solve for energy? How do we stop burning all fossil fuels? It's not just oil. Sure. If we okay. focus on oil alone and only on peak oil, we can burn more coal. We can burn more gas. This is the tar sands oil. You can do all sorts of things that are really bad for the planet to put off the day when the oil runs out. But meantime, yeah. climate change comes on and knocks you completely on the head because climate change trumps peak oil. I was going to say, it trumps everything, doesn't it? It trumps everything in the bigger frame. Okay. The single dangerous card that peak oil carries is its immediacy. It's going to come quicker and faster and suddenly, but it's only going to hit people on lower incomes. The whole of Europe is driving around at twice the price of gas, quite happily. But if you're on low income and you You've... can't drive to work anymore, you've got to do a huge change inside your head and pick up the phone and say, can I ride share? Yes, now, yes, yes. So at one perspective, that's not a big change. That's how easy can it be to say, let's ride share. And suddenly you've got a fourfold reduction in oil needed. And the other change, which is remarkably easy and not much talked about, is stop eating meat or reduce the amount of meat you eat. When it comes to climate change and oil reserves, All right. um, the eating meat, the world's livestock industry, is causing up to 20% of the cause of global warming. Really? And all of the transport, all the flying, trucking, driving, is only you know, 14, 15%. So you're saying that the, the, the globe, is this agribusiness yes. or just, you know, raise, tell it's me. It's agribusiness specifically. I mean, mm, mm, if you're going to mm, eat meat mm. and you say, I like my meat, I'll cut it down to three days a week, but I want to get locally raised, pasture raised, organic beef, far lower impact. But right now, the mass produced beef, when it's around the world, fed by soy crops, 97% of the world's soy is going to raise livestock. And the reason why the Atlantic rainforests in Southern America and the Amazon rainforests are being destroyed is because of the, the soy farming to feed livestock, to feed animals. To feed humans. And 70 percent of the world's farmland is being used to raise animals, right? And so even if you wanted to go down the route that no one talks about, biofuels for, for transport. Right, if right. You, you know, right now, if the world did biofuels for all transport, we need three times the entire world's farmland. So we're not going to go there. Yeah, but right. say we needed biofuels just for flying or ocean shipping and stuff like that. For flying, you could get it with under 1% of the world's farmland. You have biofuels made from algae. Right? Oh, okay, all right. Using, but Because biofuels made from algae need 50% less land, f sorry, 50 times less land than biofuel from ethanol. Wow, so it's a, big, a big, big difference. But there's some, still some unknowns around the algae okay. equations, okay. Okay. but it's a huge lot of excitement around there. But say you need to take you know, 5% of the world's farmland to grow fuel for purposes where electric vehicles and plug-in hybrid electric vehicles don't work. Yes, yes. All you've got to do is eat, eat vegetarian one day a week and you free up the farmland. Plus the fact that the world food crisis is going to be so enormous. This summer, Russia's not exporting grain. Pakistan has gotten, yeah. it's lost its farmlands. The more we eat meat, the more we starve other people. We often don't make that connection. No, no. I've, I've been at environmental groups who make a huge point. We're never going to fly we'll all get the train and they'll serve hamburgers at their barbecues. We don't make the connection. Well, that's a, you know, that's a, hmm, a challenging thing because you're threatening our lifestyles, if but you it's will. The, but it's the easiest of changes to make. Sure. Because also, because I did the work on cancer, the more meat you eat, the more cancer you get. The more vegetarians have less cancer, live longer, are healthier. So if you just value you know, your grandchildren, your own life, so there's a threefold argument to eat less meat for your own health, to lessen hunger around the planet, because there's more land agreeable to grow grains and rice and fruits and vegetables, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and to reduce the cause of climate change, and the oil that's needed to raise a cow for beef 
is a way out of proportion for the beef that comes out of it. So there's a fourth reason. So you're talking at the level of, of what we can do change yes. on the individual level, yes. which are critical. And I, I would yes. I would bet, but your book covers cities, and, you know, the yeah. scale, the whole so, scale. So for businesses, I've got the detailed what businesses need to do. If you're a business in the retail sector, or if you're in the forestry sector, or you're in the media, or if you're an architect or builder, what are the best solutions, the best role models? I mean, for architecture, the group Architecture 2030 has really crunched the numbers in great detail to show how you know, federal infrastructure funding money or, or the stimulation money by planning to deal with the, the huge mortgage crisis in America and the fact that so many people are going to lose their homes. Mm -hmm. You agree to underwrite, I may not have it quite right, you should interview them directly. If you agree to, the federal government will underwrite a mortgage on, on, a, on a home in, on condition that the host is completely retrofitted for energy efficiency. Okay. Therefore, the energy bills fall, right. therefore right. they can repay the mortgage. Got it, yes. It just makes sense. Yes, yes. And so, But it's detailed thinking to get these kind of solutions. But there's, for every technical area, there's a nonprofit group or a business working on it to have those solutions. So that's why I'm confident we just need the motivation. It's not the technical policies we need or the technical, it's the individual motivation to believe in that future to believe that we as humans have the ability to transcend every crisis we come to and, and, and do what I call, and others call, the great transition. The great transition. Not just the, our household or our neighborhood transition, right. or even our town transition, the great transition, our whole culture globally. Within this century, we can move all our energy to renewable energy, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. all our farming to organic farming, in the world I'm talking. All the world's forestry to sustainably certified, you know, forest certifi certification forestry. All of our fishery to sustainable fisheries. We can eliminate warfare in this century. All possible. I want the future you're naming. And I want yeah. that for the... You know, we all do. Everyone it's like, wants it. I mean, I, yes, I want healthy communities and world yes. and so on. We the key, want that. The key is, is in our minds. If you're on a soccer team or a football team, you know, and you believe you're going to lose, you're going to lose. It's a done deal. You're going to lose. Well, we if you want to win, you, the key thing is skill, practice, research, determination, and determination. Let's go back. Skill. Skill. Practice. practice research. Information. Got to do your homework. Right. Got to get in there to know how this right. stuff works. And then determination linked to leadership. So we have, with that positive vision, right? Yes. A world that works. Okay. And the, and the determination to make that happen. Yes. We have a whole lot of things to turn around. Yes. Right. All the things you're talking about in the book. Absolutely. And, and rules and laws and customs and power brokers well, and so on. So what you're saying is... I, but you know, it's happening. I was at a, a big concert the other night and I was in an arena over 3,000 people. And I just had this mindset of future in which it's absolutely normal to behave in an environmentally friendly way. That everyone recycles, that everyone you know, buys non-toxic materials, and it's not even discussed anymore. It is normal. We don't discuss that our household does not have slaves in it. It's just You're right, it's normal. the new normal. It's the new normal. So you're envisioning, or part of what you're saying is, we can create a new normal. Yes. In which we yes. are in balance with the planet's resources yes. and so on. Yes, but for every piece of that, say you've got 100 a, a pieces in that puzzle, to make it work, yes. you'll find someone has stepped up with leadership to form a small initiative. I mean, the tiny example, the landmines. Remember, okay. landmines okay. were a massive problem. They're blowing limbs off children. Right. Right. A small group, the Vietnam Veterans for Peace, I think it was called, a US group of anti-war veterans get together and say, well, we can't stop all warfare, but we will stop the landmines. And they, they formed a group. They got Princess Diana to campaign yes. with them. Yes. And the global people said, oh, you can't get a global treaty on that. It takes 15 years. So they said, well, screw that. We, we're impatient. And they went to Canada, Canada held a conference. Two years later, later, global treaty to end landmines. Two years. Because one small group said, we'll take it on, we'll do it. So and we need something. Uh, how do we do that, say, with climate change? Certainly Copenhagen was a very you, disappointment because we didn't. Copenhagen was a massive summer. global effort right. when every country in the world had to sign on by consensus to an agreed policy. It's hard to do. It's impossible. I mean, democracy is messy and dirty and, and fisty cuffy. <laughs> <laughs> and we work it out because everyone wants their opinion, right? Yes, yes. And so it, the failure of Copenhagen is making us rethink the way in which mm -hmm. we go about all this. Mm -hmm. And part of that rethinking, and I've done a major paper called Seven Ideas on this, is changing our mind frame from the 
the, the word used in climate discussion circles is mitigation. Well, what does mitigation mean? Exactly. I mean, when did you last discuss mitigation I at mean, a coffee party or a dinner party? <laughs> Forget it. It's got more than two syllables. It, it hasn't exactly got. And, and I'm saying ch mitigation means make less worse. Take the current world as it is and, and make, make it, it less, less worse. worse. Stop the problems at the edges. That's not an inspiring vision. No. no. I'm saying define victory, which is a world entirely powered by renewable energy, farms all organic, many people less meeting meat, the whole economy, every economic decision operating in harmony with the environment or restoring the environment. Wow, that's even Define better. victory, break it up into chunks and go make them happen. So climate solutions treaties. Right now, the price of solar energy is falling steadily year mm -hmm. by year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's because of, of, of it's bulking up and it's getting more efficient. Mm -hmm. But if we had 30 countries in the world sign on to a climate solutions treaty saying, we will get 15 gigawatts online this year, we'll get 20 gigawatts on the year, we can increice the, okay. the progress from 40% per annum to 60% per annum yes. and yes. drive forward the date of what's called, you know, um, when, when the, it's... Uh, <laughs> grid parity or solar parity, when the prices are equal, you bring it forward by yes, three or four yes, years. Yes, yes, when, yes. When the investors see it coming forward, say, okay, now I can invest 300 million in that because I know that once it goes bulk, everyone with a roof is going to say, I'll have solar because it pays for itself. Got it, yes. And you can, right now, we're depending on market forces, mm. plus mm. California, Germany, Spain, and Japan to do all the heavy lifting, and now China. If, if 30 nations did the heavy lifting, we accelerate progress. The same for electric vehicles. Mm -hmm. The same for efficient appliances. Why don't we have a global efficient appliance treaty that we don't produce inefficient appliances anymore? The same for development of things like biochar on the farming. The same for all these pieces. Define success, get nations to sign on to a solutions treaty and go out there and make it happen. Okay. Because the solutions okay. add up. There's enough energy available. And what I hear you saying, though, you're working at the level of it's not just enough in our households good, but not enough in our personal lives and our households, not just enough in our neighborhoods, but doing it, in, in a sense, at all scales. You've got to tie into your government. You've got to tie into get government policy at the municipal level, the state level, mm -hmm. the federal level, mm -hmm. and, frankly, the global mm -hmm. level. Now, 98% of us are never going to go near the global level, but we can sign on to other organizations that are doing them and, and give them support. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's for most people, it's to move from... Well, if it's your household, it's your neighborhood level and your city level. How do you get a whole community organized? How do I, I mean, just to organize a street party on your street, get all the neighbors talking to each other, meeting each other. Yes, yes. And yes. then if you have a house that's got solar panels on it, that's got efficient light bulbs, you're doing composting, you're growing green food, come and see what we're doing. Yes. And yes. people say, that's fascinating. I've always wanted to do that. How do you do that lasagna mm -hmm. bed? How do you do the composting? How do you get your children to, to, you, to turn the lights off? Right. All those questions. Yes, yes. Then you'll find three or four neighbors who enjoy talking this stuff together. And you say, let's challenge the next door street to a little contest. We'll have fun together. Who can get the most your little checklist of the recycling? We're not doing pesticide sprays around the garden. We're biking. We're where biking. We can, yes. we're, we're composting, blah, blah, right, blah. Right, we're putting right. solar hot water panels on the roof. And you have a fun, then you get the media involved. Then you go to a sponsor and say, what if we have a contest? Someone put up a $10,000 prize for the neighborhood that wins it, not personally, but to be used for, mm -hmm. I don't know, mm -hmm. a neighborhood play space or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. you, mm -hmm. You've got to make this thing fun to get people engaged. That's true. That is absolutely so true. So I have a saying, it's the fifth law of sustainability. Barry Commoner wrote the first four ones, which is like, you know, there's no such place as a way. And the fifth law says, if it's not fun, it's not sustainable. So right. when a community gets together and even do a course, how do we do an electric vehicle conversion? Oh, fun. That's a fun thing to do. Yeah, yeah. And then you feel confident. Wow, we did that. What else can we do? Right. And for the, most of the opposition to both the peak oil stuff and the climate change stuff is coming from people who say, well, if this is true, we're going to need more government intervention. Therefore, I don't like it, mm. which is a huge mm. logical flaw. Mm. I'm afraid, folks, this is for real but we don't need to see it as a great disaster. It's just another challenge. Our grandparents did World War II. They sacrificed their lives. They died that we have our freedom and civilization today. If we don't handle this one, all of their sacrifices will have been in vain. Wasted, as if they didn't happen. The same goes for the folks who sacrificed to eliminate slavery. It's like it wouldn't have happened because the disasters coming and are going to be so enormous. It feels enormous yes. that the stakes are much higher. It's not yep. just a war or just, quote, unquote. Yeah. Or it's, it's the quality of life on but, the planet for humans and yes, others. Yes, but if there wasn't such money flowing into the, the, the naysaying saying, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it, mm -hmm. from the oil industry and the coal industry 
and the propaganda industry, the same people who said, no, there's no smoking, smoking does not cause lung cancer. cancer. Right, and right, they put money right. into campaigns. We had a 50 year delay in mm. the stop smoking stuff because of their industry campaign. The same industry campaigning is saying, no, there's no problem with climate change, don't need to do anything. They're purely defending their personal interests. And they're, they're drawing on people who, who want to believe it's not happening because they just don't want their world to change and they don't want the government doing anything, who are being suckered in by big industry money. If you go to the website Desmog Blog, you know, you'll find, just Google Desmog Blog. You'll de -smog Desmog -blog. Blog. blog. You can okay. put it up on the screen below. Yeah, yeah. You'll see the, 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 the evidence by evidence by evidence of where that money's coming from, how it is financing the climate deniers and how little science there is in climate denial. But, but leaving aside that, the real important thing is to, to feel confidence. If you believe that we can have a beautiful life on this planet and, you're, and you owe it to your children to make a difference in the world, yes, yes. trust that feeling 100% and then get engaged. Because the, 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 the soldiers going to battle in 1940, 41, they didn't know that they individually could win the war, but they trusted that everyone else working together mm. would make it happen. Mm. And they succeeded. And so will we. Yeah. It's, it's not a matter of choice. It's, it's, we have that determination to make this thing happen, right? So on a deeper level, the, the core of my work, let me unfold this thing for you. I, I, when I'm, I do a lot and of public speaking. This is our speaking. close, because we are close, this is a time massive, to close. This is a, a massive big chart. That's, that's the future. I need to give you this end here first. It says 10,000. It says 10,000 years in the past. And I, I'm on a stage, and I'll roll this out, 10,000 years in the past. And we come, finally, years are passing. Finally, we have the age of fossil fuels. That's just in a recent, I mean, recent history. A little slice of time. Yeah, that's yeah. us. We're right at the top. And then we have 10,000 years in the future, right? I like it. And 10,000 years so in the future. When we come, that, that, and you can't argue with this stuff. The fossil fuels will all be gone. Yes. The coal, the oil, the gas. So the only choice in our minds is saying, do we therefore give up and surrender civilizations over again, you know, back to the caves? Or do we say, that's okay. We're good at this. As a civilization, we are good at dealing with these crises. We invented writing. We invented geometry. We invented, you know, policies against slavery. We, we invented civilization. The next challenge is to have civilization in harmony with nature instead of at nature's expense. Future generations will say, thank you, they did that, now we can do something else. Thank you. This is fabulous. Whoa, that's the future <laughs> we want to live. I am with Guy Doncy, who I think of as a galloping, positive energy. Let's do it. You bet. Let's do it. Thank you. You're watching Peak Moment. I'm Jenea Donaldson. I'm with Guy Doncy. Join us next time.